Good day viewers, this is Tech Mag TV News. My name is Stephanie Truter and these are the headlines. Police ban CCC Marondera rally. ZANU PF blames police for sabotaging CCC star rallies. Chinese inject 150 million into the Zim lithium mines. Zimbabwe Republic Police on Saturday banned the CCC rally in Marondera. Marondera party candidate Kasten Mateu received a letter from the officer commanding Marondera district indicating the application to hold a rally was invalid because of the insufficient notification time. The letter read, CCC notified the police of a mini car rally and that required seven days notice to the regulation authorities according to the Maintenance of Peace and Order Act, Chapter 11, verse 23. However, Chamisa's supporters still braved the police to trail him as he strolled around the town. Vice President Constantino Chiwenga has distanced Zanupia from sabotaging CCC star rally, saying the police is to be blamed for the cancellation of the rallies. Speaking at the Zanupia rally in Dangamvura Sunday, Chiwenga said his party had nothing to do with the cancellation of the rallies. Parties are free to campaign and the police act independently in sanctioning these rallies. These claims came in after ZANU-PF were blamed for working together with the police and sabotaging CCC star rallies in Marondera and the CCC supporters were denied access to the Rudaka Stadium where they were supposed to be addressed by the party president Nelson Chamisa. Chinese firms have invested 157 million into Zimbabwe's lithium mines in the past three months as they intensify their push to control the lithium chain value. Chinese companies are making serious inroads into Zimbabwe's mining sector to feed into their battery production industry, which has seen steeper demand since electric vehicle manufacturing increased in the past few years. The Chinese strategy was boosted last week when Shenzhen Stock Exchange listed Shouzhou TNA Ultra Clean Technology Co Limited bought shares worth about 15.7 million from Premier African Minerals, a Zimbabwe focused miner that is developing the Zulu resource near Bulawayo. It is one of the biggest Chinese firms with a market capitalization of about 6.7 billion. Drought relief vegetation has been extended by government for another month in the wake of the long dry spells this season, which have seen crops in some areas suffering from moisture stress and a low harvest in some districts, Senate said last week. The drought relief, which was expected to end this month, has been extended to allow government and its agencies to identify and compile names of families requiring food aid until next year's harvest. Public Service Labour and Social Welfare Deputy Minister Lavmo Matuke was responding to the Mashuna Land Central Senator Alice Chimbudzi in the Senate, who asked what military measures the government was taking given the preliminary indications suggesting lower than expected harvests owing to a long prolonged dry spell, something that has adversely affected potential harvests. Deputy Minister Matuke said President Nangagwa has directed that drought relief food be extended. In our international news, Russia has turned to China for military equipment and aid in the weeks since it began its invasion of Ukraine. U.S. officials familiar with the matter told the Washington Post. The officials who spoke on the condition of anonymity because of the sensitivity of the subject did not describe what kind of weaponry had been requested or whether they know how China responded. White House National Security Advisor Jake Sylvian told CNN that the administration was communicating directly, privately to Beijing and there will be absolutely consequences for any Chinese efforts to assist Russia in invading, evading sanctions. Ukraine officials said negotiations with Russia will continue on Monday. This past Monday, presidential advisor said that Russia is starting to talk constructively and predicted some concrete results in the next few days. 
Iran claimed responsibility Sunday for a missile barrage that struck near a sprawling U.S. consulate complex in northern Iraq, saying it was retaliation from an Israeli strike in Syria that killed two members of its Revolutionary Guard earlier this week. Iraq's foreign ministry on Sunday summoned Iran's ambassador to protest the attack, calling it a flagrant violation of the country's sovereignty. No injury was reported in Sunday's attack on the city of Ebel, which marked a significant escalation between the U.S. and Iran. Iraq's foreign ministry spokesman Ahmad al-Sadov told the Associated Press that the ministry summoned the Iranian ambassador Iraj Masajedi to deliver the diplomatic protest. The United States said the missile strike emanated from Iran and strongly condemned it. This has been TechMed TV News. Thank you for watching. Please share, like and subscribe as we keep bringing you more top stories. See you next time.